Hi guys, today we are continuing with learning the GraphQL. Especially we will be focused on more advanced data types. During our last lesson, we created two queries and one mutation. Our create movie mutation is not perfect, to be honest. Uh, we passed there five parameters. In that scenario, it's a good practice to create a wrapper object. For that, we have to use the built-in GraphQL type it's simply called input. So I will create a movie input and copy and paste movie's properties there. In our mutation function, I will add input variable and I will call, call it input. Uh, next, I will set its return type to be create movie input type. After updating the schema, we also have to update the resolver function. Mm. Our actual input is nested inside object we're receiving from um, create movie function. It would be a little misleading to have it named that way. So I will rename it to, to arcs. Now, now we can distract input from arcs object and everything will be working properly. To prove that, I will test the mutation inside the Apollo Studio. Again, I will pick the right mutation and click the plus button to add it to the code editor. As you may see, we have our input wrapper. As you can see, we have our input wrapper object available in API documentation. It is also added as a single variable to our function. I will pick a few fields to add. And as you can see inside variable editor, title, year, runtime are properties of the input object. Again, I will pick values to be returned from the API and I will execute the mutation. Oh, mm, we have some error. This field shouldn't be null. Mm, let's move back to code and see what we are missing. Yes, I didn't save the script file. I saved it after updating the schema. That's why the new one was presented in the documentation. Unfortunately, I have forgotten to save it after editing the mutation function. So let's save it and try it once again. Cool, now it works properly. Let's move back to the code. Next we'll be adding a more advanced type called union. Union is type containing at least two subtypes. In other words, it works as an OR operator. If the query returns some union type, it can return type X or type Y. So let's create the union. So to create the union, we need a second type first. Since our last lesson, I have added a new JSON file called a book JSON. Mm. Inside that file, there is a long list of books. I also imported books array to script. I have prepared the type for books. So let's copy paste it. It consists mainly of strings. There are also two integers as well. Let's create a query returning that books array. I will simply call it get books. Now let's check if it works. Mm, I will use a new query for our books. I will also pick all of available properties. Then I will execute the query. Cool, it returned an null. Mm, that's because we haven't declared the resolver function. Let's fix it. Once again, this tutorial is not about databases. Instead, we will return mocked data from our books file. Let's execute the query once again. Great, this time it works. Now we are ready to move on on our GraphQL types journey. So um, imagine that our frontend needs a searching functionality. 
The users type some phrases and receive the movie or book in return. We don't know the specific type. In that scenario, the union type is the perfect choice. Again, I will add a new type to type devs object. I will call it search result and I will set it equal to movie or book. Next, I will create a new query and name it search. Queries also may take some input arguments. So I will call mine a phrase and set the return type as our search result union type uh, array. That way, I'm telling GraphQL that he might expect the movie or book to be returned from this query. Now, I can add the search function to resolvers. As any other resolver function, it takes four arguments. But again, we'll be focused on the second one, which is input. I will unwrap the phrase variable from the input. Then I will search for movies having a title with a provided phrase. Next, I will do the same for books. And at the end, I will combine those two arrays into one and return it. With the search function added to resolvers, we are almost ready. There is one crucial point. The union type is an abstract type. Apollo server has to know how to distinguish types of union. For that, we have to add our unions to resolvers and specify how our union's types differ. Each resolver has a method called underscore underscore resolver type. As the first argument, it takes the object. In our case, we know that the object is movie if it contains a plot. Only our movie contains the plot. Secondly, object is the book if it contains a number of the pages. If there was another object passed, we return the null. Okay, there is one bug. In resolver type method, the resolver word should start from uppercase. And that's it. Now we can test it out in Apollo Studio. Firstly, let's find the search method in the query section and add it to the code editor. Click the plus button for a search phrase. It is added to the code. The last thing is to tell GraphQL what to fetch from API. This is the tricky part because query may return two types and they have different models. When we click on the movie type and click on the title field, we can see a new syntax appearing. Below the search name, we have a type name. This is the syntax telling Apollo when you find the movie object, please return those fields. When we pick a field from a book object, another type name is added to the code. Now we are defining what to fetch from book type. There is one best practice when working with unions. Each GraphQL type has an internal field called underscore underscore type name. As the name suggests, it returns the name of the type. It's so useful to distinguish what we have received. Let's execute the query and verify if it works as expected. We have only got the books. Maybe let's change the phrase a little and search once again. Cool, now we have a books and the movies returned. So that's it for today. Thank you and see you next time.